One of the first things which everybody should understand is that every creature in the universe that is in any way sensitive and in any manner of speaking conscious regards itself as a human being. That is to say, it knows and is aware of a hierarchy of beings above it and a hierarchy of beings below it. If you take such a tiny creature as a fruit fly, it is aware of all sorts of weird little animals and objects and spores floating in the atmosphere which we don't even notice unless we've got a microscope around. And it criticizes them as being inferior animals, whereas human beings are things that it doesn't comprehend. And we see these far off objects floating in the heavens and we have only the vaguest idea of what they may be. That is to say that wherever you are and whoever you are and whatever you are, you're in the middle. In the same way as when you stand, say, on the deck of a ship and you can see a, a horizon all around you to exactly the same distance. You're in the center of a circle. Now, everything in the world feels like that. And also it has its own kind, which look natural to it. Spiders and uh, hydras and sea urchins and so on don't look very natural to us. We say, well, I wouldn't want to look like that. But they say when they see us, well, what kind of an awful thing is that? And what a lot of nonsense it does. But now, here is a very strange thing that every creature experiences being here as constituting a sort of blockage of a certain tension which constitutes the feeling of I-ness, of there-ness, of being here. Not only you as a total organism standing here, but all the component cells of your body. Each one of them has some sort of a feeling of its own with its own little life. And if you examine the stream of your blood, you'll find it full of all kinds of organisms that are having all sorts of conspiracies and games and plots and eating each other and doing these things that like we do. Only we wouldn't be healthy as a total organism unless there were all these wars and fights and plots and politics going on between the various cells in our blood. So then the problem though is that for each individual which is outlined, which is a separate thing, is part of a larger pattern of a whole. If you do feel alone, a little bit vulnerable, and that fact we hurt a bit, and through hurting a bit we know we're here, you are a, a kind of an obstacle to the flow of life. And as life impinges upon you, wham! You rebound and you hurt a bit, and so you are there. Although people cultivate this, they say, in general, they rather it would be not that way. We'd like to forget ourselves. And so ever so many people say, well, I want something to lose myself in. I want something to belong to. And that you have, therefore, this sense of being alone of being a particular, separate form that is unlike any other form on earth. That's just you. You feel this intense separateness. The sensation of being you subject to the most peculiar feelings and pains and anxieties and all that sort of thing. All that is an essential prerequisite for feeling something else. If you want to be omnipotent and you want to live in a universe where nothing happens except what you, exactly what you will to happen, everything is absolutely transparent to my intelligence. I have no problems. Well, that's a lot of bunk. Nobody wants to be in that position because there wouldn't be anything to it. Because once everything is under your central control, well, just nothing is happening. It's a bore from beginning to end. 
So what any being whatsoever who has a sense of centrality, who has a sense of selfhood, who has a sense of identity, that sense of identity is inseparable from something else going on. These two sensations, one of being the lonely, central, sensitive, vulnerable self, living in the midst of a world that feels other, that is not under your control, these two sensations are really one sensation. You couldn't have the one experience without the other experience. Every living being is a manifestation of everything that there is. And every one, I, as I look around, I can see uh, every one of you as the, the, the divine being coming at me in a different way. Crazy. <laughs> but what we do is to try and prevent people from realizing that this is so. If everybody were perfectly clear that they were a manifestation of the divine being, nothing very much would happen. But so as to keep everybody a little bit unclear about it, the whole thing uh, bugs itself <laughs> and, 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 and creates these little doubts, these sensations of, of blockage, of uh, not being very sure of yourself, but knowing very much indeed that you are yourself and that uh, you're alone and it's all up to you. The terrible feeling of responsibility. If you intensify that feeling and bring it to its highest pitch, you will immediately realize that you are aware of it only by virtue of the entire sensation of something else. Something defined as not you. So the feeling of not you and the feeling of you are relative and you can't have the one without the other because the whole idea is if there wasn't a difference you wouldn't know anything was happening the, the whole point is then if everybody of us all were the same and all shared the same ideas exactly and so on there'd be no nothing to talk about because everybody would be a bore there'd be just yourself echoing back at you you see and you'd feel like a madman in a hall of mirrors where everything you went was, was just yourself, you see, in all directions, just you. Well, that's no fun. Difference and, and every kind of variety of differentiation is the way through which unity is discovered. The universe is the interplay of difference and the primordial difference is between up and down, back and front, black and white, is and isn't, male and female, positive and negative. If you will accept the idea that you are your own eyes and your own heart and your own ears with that wonderful little spiral cochlea inside and all these amazing gadgets here, you're all that. But you don't even think about it, but you are it. Now therefore, by a little extension of the imagination, you can very well see that if all those bones and subtleties inside you feel other than your conscious ego, but nevertheless are one with it, the same argument will go for all the other things going on around you. The sun shining, the stars twinkling, the wind blowing and the great ocean restlessly pounding against these cliffs. That's you too.